So I have some questions about the Area 51 invasion that's going to happen. Number one, when is it happening? Number two, who's Chad and who's Kyle? Number three, who's going to make the rousing speech before everybody bum rushes Area 51? Um, John Cena? I guess he could do that. He does a pretty good vodka commercial. Um, is Little Nas X going to play like as you guys are storming or is he performing as he's running towards area 51 i'm a little unclear on that um finally why are we storming area 51 i asked this as somebody sent me a picture of a thick alien stripping on the pole which confused me even further so if anybody wants to answer these questions it would be appreciated hi this is leslie welcome to geeky girls night in hold on to your seat uh what are you doing now you're talking and now you are now listening to the geeky girls night in Podcast. Podcast. You are now listening to the Geeky Girls Night In. Podcast. Podcast. Other than Area 51, a lot of things have been going on this week. Um, 007 is not Idris Elba. Because it's a girl. It's a black girl. It's Lashana Lynch. If you don't know who that is, but that name sounds familiar, she played Maria Rambeau from Captain Marvel. She won't be playing Bond she just took over the code name and i'm kind of excited to see where this goes because are they going to continuation with just her being 007 and we're just done with bond we'll see super excited um in other news i have been watching a lot of youtube lately and that has taken the place of me reading books apparently i don't i don't know about that um some of the things that I think you should be on the lookout for from YouTube. Um, I've discovered this channel called Asian Boss, and I watched an episode on the number one hostess in Japan. I'm still a little muggy, I guess is the word you would use, on what a hostess actually is. It seems like a prostitute almost, but there's no sex. Like, you're sort of paying for their time, but the hostess also keeps track of you and cares about you and sends you little presents when it's your birthday and things like that. But in exchange, you buy them alcohol and champagne towers and things like that. So I'm not 100% certain. That was one I watched. I also watched the number one host. And that one was a little sadder to me. He just seemed kind of lost. I don't know. I don't know. It just it seemed really sad. Go ahead and check out that channel. They have a ton more other than the two that I'm talking about. Hey. You. Yeah, you. Do you like LaCroix? Evelyn from the Internets is trying all the curate flavors of LaCroix so you don't have to. Personally, I think LaCroix tastes like somebody took a glass of fizzy water and hung a strawberry over it 
and scream derogatory things at the strawberry and then package that water. That's what LaCroix is to me. Also, um, this one's kind of a big one. Have you ever heard of van life or van living? It's, it's pretty interesting to me and I kind of discovered it when I was watching Bacalachin videos back in the day and basically people like kit out old vans. I'm talking like from the early 90s. Um, they, they rip out the back and they, they customize it to what they need and then they live out of it. They just travel in it and they, they go from point A to point B and do what they need to do. Some people don't have like a, a steady job so they don't stay in one place so like they can travel all over the country if they want to some people do and there's an article on geeky girl geeky girl guide about crystal vanner she is one of the first ones that i saw and she's one of very few uh black people doing it and she has a ton of videos about her van life and how she kitted out her van. She's had two thus far, I do believe. Um, the one broke down and then she, she got another one and kitted that one out. She's had some issues uh, with other people, but she's pretty cool and you should check her out. Um, I don't know how this person popped up, but it seems like she popped up on several people's YouTube pages as well because my friends were talking about her as well. And her name is Janelle Eliana and she has a pet snake and a baby blue, baby blue van that she's kitted out. She only has two videos thus far and she already has 300,000 subscribers. I don't know how she swung that, but her videos so far, the two that I watch, the two that she has, are super interesting. She's funny. She's really young. And she's one of the ones that I think she stays, you know, in her town or whatever. And she works and stuff. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see how she kitted it out while she has a steady stream of money versus somebody that may not work a normal nine to five and they rely on some type of income that is like freelancing or something like that and and how they did their van so that's someone to check out and everybody that i'm talking about here i will have a link to their youtube channel their their the specific um, video i'm talking about i'll have a link to that in the show notes so make sure you check that out finally and as usual um the 100 baby challenge with kelsey and peach k um lately her matriarch is really close to dying and so she will have a new matriarch soon and this matriarch since she can't reproduce anymore uh got to marry quote marry the guy of her dreams on the sims so it it's cute she's she's cute about this whole situation sometimes though i'd be screaming at the screen because she be doing weird things that she doesn't have to do and if she didn't would make her life easier but anybody that plays the sims knows that speaking of the sims i have played the sims a whole lot uh, this past weekend for those of you that don't know my playing style is kind of a dynasty I want to have as big of a family tree as I possibly can. So I started out with a woman named Lola Kane, which sounds like Nova Kane, but it's Lola Kane. And she had a bunch of kids. And then um, from those kids, once she got elderly, I chose which one that I was going to put forth as the matriarch and she's had a bunch of kids I think she's had 10 kids and um, her husband has been dead for a while almost all of the kids from that particular husband are grown and have been put in a separate house I kind of got this idea from Kelsey that way like it doesn't shuttle them off really like I just put them in the house with their other siblings so I can find them if I need them um sadly though all the kids from that dad are kind of 
um, ugly and I don't want to play them so when he died my character started dating around she met another guy and they had twins and they got engaged and then they had another baby so they recently eloped and got married and while he does have a key to the house they live separately he can come over anytime he wants they just live separately now my character is elderly and one of the two girls that i have there's three kids left a boy and two girls and one of the two girls will be taking over the household and i haven't decided which one yet they're both very cute and for those of you that are confused i always play uh the girl character i don't like playing the boys it's just, I never have for some reason. If you play The Sims, do you play the girls or the boys? Which one do you do? I would love to know. Uh, go ahead and tweet out at Geeky Girl and I. Would love to know. Plus, boys are super impossible to dress cute without having a ton of mods. So, in this game, I have a jealous daughter. Um, she was jealous and angry that she got moved into the sibling house and has seduced her stepfather and is now pregnant by him in the sibling house dun 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 this this kind of poses a slight problem because each sims house can only house eight characters if she has twins that puts them up at eight however i have two sims in that house that are borderline elderly so hopefully they will die before I need to age up the other two. Um, right now, the two of the three in my house are children. One is a toddler, and then they'll age up to teenagers. So I think I got some time. We got some time. So, and hopefully she doesn't, my character that I'm currently playing, the elderly woman, doesn't die before the kids age up into young adults. So we'll see how that goes either way both girls will stay in the house until the mother passes away because if she dies before i will need to i will need that young adult one to raise the kid one Woo! that was an explanation um, in other gaming news, there is a new game coming later this year to PC. It's called Spaceland. And let me read you the, the information that would be in the box. Danger lurks around every corner on far-flung alien worlds. And today, developer Tortuga Team is releasing an overview of just some of the deadly alien aggressors in their upcoming tactical adventure, Spaceland. In this new overview, you can download images and info about monsters like the Creeper Roach and the Big Bad Broughton. Um, each alien species has distinct combat tactics and abilities, challenging the player's tactical skills as they make the best use of cover, line of sight, and good old-fashioned firepower to take down these fearsome foes. I have pictures, like it says, of the characters, and I'll be posting those on Instagram for you guys to see. Um, I also have screenshots of gameplay that I'll, I'll post on Instagram. Um, I took a look at what the main characters, like I guess they would be considered the heroes. There's three of them. All three are white, two of them are male, and one of them is female. So not too much diversity there, but it's early days in the game, so you never know. I am unsure if I can share the trailer video with you. I will find out, and if I can, I will update the show notes and also put it in next week's notes, and it'll be on Twitter and the Facebook page. Um, another game coming out, well, it's I think it's already out. They just launched a new server. It's called Bite Bite, and I'll read you the description on that. It's, uh, does the noble blood of a vampire course through your veins? Or does the heart of a raging werewolf beat in your chest? Open the gates to a legendary fantasy world and transform into a creature of the night. Now, how come werewolves are never noble? They're never a noble thing. It's always vampires that are all snooty and uppity. That is something to think about. 
anyway, you're able to register for free to play on this. Go ahead and check it out. A link will be in the description of our show notes, of course. Um, in other gaming news, the Nintendo Switch Lite. So the news for this came out shortly after I released the, the podcast last week. Um, it's handheld only for play on the go. It comes in three colors. There's no HDMI connector and it's slightly smaller than a regular Switch. So here are my thoughts on this. I'm the owner of a Switch and I mostly play it in handheld mode. It's a lot less features for only $100 less, like $199 versus $299. With it being smaller in size, I can see it being more handheld friendly, but I'm going to be honest with you and I'm going to stick with my Switch that I have that's currently in its Paw Patrol case because we fancy it like that. Um, I enjoy the three colors that it comes in. They're absolutely gorgeous. But if I need to, I can go on Etsy for customization. Like there are amazing things you can do. As a matter of fact, the one, the customization that I actually want is Van Gogh themed sticker overlays in his painting Sunflowers. So that's something to think about but like i said i'll stick with my nintendo switch um there's no point in me having the switch and the light so that's it for our gaming news today's show is brought to you by everyone's favorite new vampire game disaster love pong have you ever asked yourself man i wish i sure was more attractive to vampires and i want to play ping pong at the same time Well, now you can. Fill this in later, Game Studios. Bring you Disaster Love Pong. Disaster Love Pong. Simply grab the razor blade handle and swing away. Everyone loves ping pong and everyone wants a vampire lover. (laughs) It's so much fun now that we're getting blood on each other. Or at least a vampire to pay you attention. So what better way to do that than make six easy payments of $49.99. Grab your razor handle and challenge a fellow vamp crazy love hound and get to playing. (sighs) No matter if you're winning or losing, halfway through the game, we guarantee you'll either have attracted every blood drinking lover monger in a 10 mile radius's attention or you'll be too adrenaline filled from pain to care. Heck, throw a party and invite all your friends to nick and cut themselves, too. Well, it's cool if we all do it. And if anyone says it's disgusting to split her clod-swinging ping-pong paddle around, just remember, it's only weird until you're bitten and become immortal. Disaster Love Pong. Play for blood. And after a second game, we double guarantee you'll be hounded by every vampire in a 10-mile radius, and they'll only have eyes for you. Or you'll be too weak to feel your lonely heart pulsing in your chest anymore. Disaster Love Pong, now available at local blood banks and exclusively at Week in Geek. Disaster Love Pong, order love, play from the heart. Order Disaster Love Pong now or be lonely for eternity. Razor blades not included. Friend of the podcast news, I guess you would call this. The, the Black Alachian, who we've had on here before, whom we talk to on Instagram all the time, who is an absolute dear heart and so funny and fun and full of life and positivity, um, he's currently in Spain. And he's hiking the Camino de Santiago. He's actually been there since the second week of July. It's just that I've had it in my show notes every single week. It's just I kept forgetting to ask. To, to speak on it um, we're here wishing him the best of luck and logo if you do run with the bulls please be safe i do not need to see news of bulls goring you i will be very upset with you um a new friend of the podcast kenya wright um author of the santeria series that i bug her about regularly um after last week's podcast she reached out to me like I reached out to her initially to let her know that I mentioned her new book on the podcast and she la- she sent me an email back just laughing at me because of the Santeria series um, we're going to have her on the show soon so we can just cut up and have a good time and talk about books and I don't know if you would consider Quinzel a friend of the podcast I'd say she's podcast adjacent she's always here um, she recently wrote an article about the Lion King 
and the scene that I know a lot of us are dreading. I'm not even going to talk about it here. But if you go on to geekygirlguide.com, you can read that article. Also, she owes us a taste test of that KFC chicken Cheeto sandwich abomination at KFC. So if you see her on Twitter, uh, her Twitter is at Quinzel Lee, and there's one L, so it's Q-U-I-N-Z-E-L-E-E. -E -E. Make sure you tweet at her, hashtag Quinzel Smack Your Lip, because she needs to get that done. She's out here sipping on Frappuccinos, and she knows good and damn well she needs to go eat that chicken sandwich. So that's it for this week. Um, once again, I want to thank you so much for listening to my rambles. I so appreciate it. Um, I enjoy some of the feedback that I get and um, I do enjoy the emails with people just absolutely laughing. Um, I do need your help, however. If you haven't yet reviewed our show, I would really appreciate it if you did. Um, reviews help us stand out um, in a very crowded market and just, I need to know what I need to do to be better. Um, when I was in high school, I took two years of marching band. I don't want to talk about it. And But one of the things that we had to do was push-ups. When you made a mistake, you did push-ups because push-ups celebrated you getting better. I would like to do a virtual push-up because I'll be damned if I get on the ground and do a push-up right now. <laughs> so let me know what you like, what you don't like, what we need more of. Do you like the intro? Do you like the outro? Do you need something else? Let me know. I can't get better without you. Um, if you want to help in a financial way, you can buy us a cup of coffee. Um, go to ko-fi.com slash geekygirlsni and you can buy us a cup of coffee. And as I say on the outro, thanks to Michelle. She's our first, uh, I, not a patron. She's our first coffee giver. <laughs> um, there will be stickers coming soon. Um, I need to update the page and get it cleaned up. But I have some ideas of some fun stickers that, you know, you could buy. And if you did buy, would help out the podcast as well. It would keep the lights on in the dungeon. It would keep. Quinzel and chicken Cheeto sandwiches and Frappuccinos. So, all the links that I talked about will be in the show notes. Until then, have a good night. Bye. Hey there. Thank you for tuning in. Geeky Girls Night In is brought to you by me, Leslie. Special thanks to Quinzel. Shouts out to Kim. Emily and Mecca, who are always willing to give a helping hand. Do you like the show? Wishing there was something you could do to support? Help us out by buying us a cup of coffee. Go to coffee.com slash geekygirlsni to pledge a cup or two for the show. That's ko-fi.com slash geekygirls n as in Nancy I. Your support helps keep the lights on in the dungeon and the podcast on the air. Special thanks to Michelle. She's our first donor. You can check out other writings or interesting tidbits on Geeky Life at geekygirlguide.com. Until next time. <laughs>